Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, there are new details in the school shooting investigation in Michigan as the accused shooter remains in custody. Outside with Live Cam, we hope you had a great weekend. Back to muggy, mild weather. But today is one of our cold front days. We'll get details from Mike Osterhage, who is back this week. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, December 6th. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. It was definitely humid at times. So Steph ran in the Rock and Roll Marathon mm -hmm. yesterday? Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday, yesterday, yes. Yeah. How'd it go? Uh, it, you know, it went well, considering. <laughs> not, not ideal running weather because it was just so muggy. It was so muggy, but at least it wasn't like muggy and, you know, sunny. At least it was overcast, but, you know. That could have made it a lot a worse. Yes, it right. could have. All right, so you crossed the finish line. Yes. Okay, yes, good. I made it. How was your time? It. Did you do good? Uh, two, two hours and five minutes, which is good for, for me at, oh, at this point in my life. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, we're you proud guys. of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're proud of you. Mike, we're proud of you for coming back after a yeah. big family weekend. <laughs> well, and, and coming back to this weather, but uh, it's going to be changing. So yeah. in other words, the, if you are heading out the door this morning, do take a coat. All right, so you brought chillier weather from Tennessee? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Oh, and thank you. Uh, it'll get here, but it's going to take a couple of hours. As a matter of fact, the front is kind of on our doorstep right now. Out ahead of it, yeah, it is a kind of a repeat of yesterday. There may be some mist out there. Like we had yesterday morning. I didn't see any on my windshield, but just don't be surprised with that. And there's plenty of fog. I'm going to show you that in a second. 70 degrees right now. The normal low temperature is in the mid 40s. So we're 25 above normal 60s in the hill country and these numbers are just sky high those dew point temperatures and therefore the humidity uh, visibility Castroville is just a quarter mile same thing over there in Hondo a lot more fog further on out to the west and there is a dense fog advisory that was just issued about uh, 45 minutes to an hour ago for portions of the hill country up until seven o'clock. So when that front moves through, obviously that's going to scour all that fog on out of here. There's really nothing showing up on radar. There may be a couple of showers here and especially as the front moves through and see that little line right there. That's the front up there just moving through San Angelo. So that's going to continue to work its way down here and arrival time here in town is going to be about nine o'clock this morning, obviously sooner in portions of the hill country. Mold is on the moderate side and throughout the rest of today. Again, get ready to head out the door, even though you don't need it right now. Grab a jacket 70 this morning. This is going to be our high temperature for the day. A couple of showers out there and then the front moves through. It's going to get very windy. Temperatures will drop steadily throughout the day. 55 later on this afternoon and it's going to be a blustery 55 and then it's going to go right back to hot temperatures by the end of the week. We're going to be flirting with record high temperatures by the end of the week. Believe it or not, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We now have the mugshot of the teen who is facing charges in connection with a deadly shooting at a car wash on the west side. 18 year old Cesar Martinez is charged with murder and is in the Bear County Jail on a $150,000 bond. Officers tell us he is accused of shooting a 33 year old man at that car wash near Ingram Park Mall this weekend. Now, when officers got there, the man was unresponsive with a gunshot wound. He was then rushed by EMS to University Hospital, but eventually died. Investigators believe an argument broke out between Martinez, one of Martinez's family members, and the 33-year-old man leading up to that shooting. Now to the Michigan school shooting investigation. We're learning more about the parents of the teen suspect and their actions before they were arrested this weekend. Meanwhile, seven more teenagers have been arrested in connection with other school threats in the area. Here's ABC's Ika Jachi. This morning, new details about the capture of James and Jennifer Crumbly, the parents of the 15-year-old charged in the Michigan high school shooting. Inside. Authorities found the couple inside an empty commercial building Saturday after missing a court appearance to face involuntary manslaughter charges in connection with the shooting. The man who owns that building says he has a friendly relationship with the Crumblies and he invited them to stay at his art studio to avoid death threats and hostility that was surrounding their home. According to the man's attorney, he was not aware that authorities were looking for the Crumblies. Authorities say the couple withdrew $4,000 from an ATM before the manhunt ended, but their lawyer insists the couple was not fleeing. Our clients were absolutely going to turn themselves in 
It was just a matter of logistics. Investigators say James Crumley purchased a gun on Black Friday, days before their son allegedly used it to kill four students at Oxford High School. One student remains hospitalized. According to prosecutors, the Crumleys resisted removing their son from school on the day of the shooting. Hours before the attack, the parents were confronted with a disturbing drawing and chilling message that said blood everywhere, which was found on the boy's desk. In a statement, the superintendent said that teen claimed the drawing was part of a video game he was designing. The superintendent also saying the teen stayed with counselors for more than an hour, and at no time did counselors believe the student might harm others based on his behavior, responses, and demeanor, which appeared calm. But he was eventually allowed to return to class because he had no prior disciplinary infractions and his parents refused to take him home. This morning, the Crumbleys and their son have pleaded not guilty. They are not speaking to us, any of them, and they are all in my jail, all segregated in separate cells and constantly monitored. And now seven teenagers in the Detroit area have been charged in connection with copycat threats, which forced more than 80 districts to cancel school last week. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, New York. The nation's top business economists have sharply raised their forecasts for inflation. They're predicting more of the price spikes that have resulted in large part in large part from bottleneck supply chains. A survey released today by the National Association for Business Economics shows that consumer prices are predicted to rise 6% this quarter compared with a year ago. That marks an increase from the 5% inflation the forecasters predicted in September. This morning, at least 15 people are dead and 27 still missing after Indonesia's Mount Semeru erupted this weekend. Today, a river dam nearby the rescue operation areas burst because of cold lava and heavy rain. That resulted in hundreds of villagers being forced to move away from that location. An aerial inspection from a helicopter showed that areas of villages where the lava flowed are badly damaged. Those areas are covered by volcanic material from the volcano's avalanches. Myanmar's deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been sentenced to four years in prison on charges of incitement and breaking COVID-19 rules. She was removed from power after the country's military stage a coup back on February 1st. She's still facing 10 criminal charges, including corruption, illegally importing and possessing, possessing walkie-talkies. Myanmar's deposed president was also sentenced to four years on the same charges. 437, about 69 degrees. And a big finish for the UTSA Roadrunners this weekend. And now they're going bowling. We're going to have a preview next. Yes, they are. Bowl game bound. Outside with live cam waiting on this next front. We will notice it today. Mike will talk about how cool it will get as we head into this uh, week of December. It is Monday the 6th. Glad you're with us. The UTSA Roadrunners are going bowling for the third time in their young football history and for the second season in a row where they face San Diego State, the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl on December 21st at 6.30 p.m. In a season of first, the Conference USA champions will try and win their first bowl game after two previous appearances. Just last year, they lost to Louisiana in the first responders bowl, 31-24. Then in 2016, they fell to New Mexico, 23-20 in the New Mexico Bowl. Now, after defeating Western Kentucky in front of over 41,000 fans at the Alamo Dome Friday night, UTSA will try to cap off their best season in program history with a December to remember. It's surreal. You know, this is what we've been working up to, what we've been working up for. We made sure that the triangle traveled this entire season, and, uh, you know, we back at it again. We've never won a bowl game, right? And these guys have uh, done a lot of firsts this year. So uh, I challenged them when the year started. You know, why not us? Some some team's going to be the first one to win the West. Why not us? Some team's going to be the first one to win the whole conference. Why not us? Well, somebody's going to be the first team to win a bowl game in the history of this school. You know, why not us? You may remember Roadrunners were selected to play in the Frisco Bowl last year, but had a switch after it was canceled due to COVID protocols. San Diego State comes into this game 11-2 after falling to Utah State. 46-13 in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. Roadrunners will be the visiting team of the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl matchup. The game officially set for Tuesday, the 21st, 6.30 p.m. at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. Very exciting to announce that number 14, Oregon Ducks, and number 16, the Oklahoma Sooners, will be our teams. 
That's right. Oklahoma returns to Alamo City for the first time since 2007 when the Sooners upset number one Missouri to win the Big 12 football championship. It's also the first time the Valero Alamo Bowl has featured two 10 win teams. The Ducks are one and one in their previous two appearances at the Alamo Bowl. In 2013, Oregon beat Texas 37, spoiling Mac Brown's final game as head coach of the Longhorns. And then in 2015, the Ducks lost in triple overtime to TCU, the most memorable comeback in Alamo Bowl history. I left that game early. I felt terrible. <laughs> Excited to be here. You know, certainly teams that, you know, that may have had a chance to be in the national championship earlier in the year didn't quite work out. But also both young teams. When you look at the rosters and the kids that are playing, they're very young on the talent from that perspective. So a chance for them to see them when they're probably going to be ascending next year, maybe above us. So it's great to see that. Uh, we look forward to a great game uh, on December 29th. In case you're wondering, the 2021 Valero Alamo Bowl is the highest ranked matchup of all non-college football playoff games. Game is set for Wednesday, December 29th, 8.15 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. Oklahoma has hired Clemson defensive coordinator Brent Venables as our new head coach and will be introduced later today. And make it four wins in a row for our Spurs, who held off a late surge from the Warriors on the road this weekend. San Antonio took a 22-point lead early in the second quarter and led 67-58 at halftime. But the Warriors chipped away until they eventually retook the lead 104-103 in the fourth quarter. But just like they did against Boston, Spurs rallied and closed on a 9-1 run, capped off by huge baskets from Derek White and DeJounte Murray. White finished with a team high 25, Murray at 23. Spurs win 112-107. They hope this win can be a turning point. They're one of the best teams, not the best team in the league. So there's obviously a lot of mistakes that we made that we can learn from, um, watch the film and grow from. So um, it's good to get a win and, and learn from it. So um, just grow each and every game, um, learn from our mistakes, and um, it's going to pay off in the long run. Busy week ahead for our Spurs tonight. The team is in Phoenix to take on the Suns at 8 p.m. Then they return home tomorrow night to welcome the Knicks to the AT&T Center. Nuggets in town Thursday and Saturday. Then New Orleans will take the trip to San Antonio coming up on Sunday. One final note, UIW falls to Sam Houston State. Their run is over after a great season for the Cardinals. It's still a great season. Yes. Time now, 444 and about 69 degrees out there. Coming up next, a potentially game-changing medical breakthrough for patients living with type 1 diabetes. Outside with live cam, we are going to conduct an EAS test. Stand by for that, and we'll be back. In this morning's GMA First Look, a potentially game-changing medical breakthrough. Have you cured type 1 diabetes? The data that we have seen in the early stage of this clinical trial with Brian's results are nothing short of remarkable. 64-year-old Brian Shelton has lived with type 1 diabetes for nearly 50 years. 15 years with dangerous episodes of hypoglycemia. You spend your entire life, every minute of the day, trying to keep track of where your numbers are at. Did I eat? Did I not eat? But now Brian's life has changed after becoming the first participant in a groundbreaking new clinical trial. How do you feel right now? Coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to tell you Brian's dramatic story and introduce you to the scientists who say they have the key that may cure type 1 diabetes. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York.
All right, so stand by for that EAS test. We're having some technical difficulties. We don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully not in the middle of Mike's weathercast today. No, because we need to hear that. We want to hear all the good news about the cool weather coming into town. And it's going to be uh, about, uh, well, what is it, 4.30 right mm -hmm. now, almost 5 o'clock, so about 4 hours when it's going to be coming through here in town, obviously a little sooner in the, the hill country. So you'll definitely uh, notice it when it comes on through here. So um, outside right now on live cam, as you can see, it's fairly clear here in town, but you head off to the west. Well, actually down to the south as well as Stinson, two and a half miles visibility, but it's pea soup now heading out 90 and toward Castroville, Hondo at a quarter mile, more fog out to the west in portions of the hill country. And of course, that's where the uh, dense fog advisory is this morning right now up until seven o'clock. The front's going to move through and get rid of all that fog, uh, but it's going to be thick at times. Now, even where there's no dense fog advisory, say in around Hondo, obviously you have a lot of very thick fog in there around Castroville on top of that. And and again, the front uh, right along, well, kind of blinking, you miss it, and there's not much associated with that front as far as any rain, and that's going to be the situation this morning. We'll have a couple of showers out there as it moves on through. Don't count on a lot. There may be, you know, a decent shower here and there, especially off to the, the northeast, but that'll be about it. Humidity is extremely high. However, as the front comes on through here, it is just going to sweep that drier air in and it's going to drop like a rock. Temperatures are going to be dropping down. The wind is going to be picking up. It's going to be very, very dry tomorrow morning and much cooler tomorrow. Then that's not going to last very long because this humidity is going to start to then return and it's going to be downright hot by the end of the week. We're going to be flirting with record high temperatures by the end of the week around here, if you can believe. So it's almost one extreme to the other. Then we have another front moving through. Now anyway, here's the uh, computer model. And again, this morning as the front comes through, a couple of showers, maybe a bit more rain further off to the northeast. Uh, sprinkly shower too. That'll be about it. Then the front comes in here. It's going to get rid of all the fog. It's going to be windy. It's going to be much cooler. Again, grab a jacket this morning, even though you don't need it right now because you will buy later on this afternoon because of the temperatures mid 50s and then, of course, very, very windy conditions. There could be a sprinkle or two overnight. I uh, kind of doubt it, but also cloud cover overnight is going to keep us from getting as cold as what we could get. It will act like a little bit of a blanket on top of us. All right, so we're in the 70s right now, 63 at noon, very windy, most of the cloudy skies. Then we continue down from there to mid 50s by late in the afternoon. Still windy conditions. The winds are going to ease up then somewhat overnight. Tomorrow we get down to 45 degrees, 65 in the afternoon. Good looking day. Nice kind of late fall day. Then the heat gets turned back up. Add 10 to that on Wednesday. Add another oh, almost 10 by Friday. The record both Thursday and Friday is 85 degrees. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's so close that. to record territory. Then another front. And so Saturday is going to be another upside down day. Very, very warm early in the morning. And then we'll drop to about 60 in the afternoon. I would ask what Mother Nature's thinking, but I'm not real sure anybody knows at this yeah, point. I think she's yeah. just trying to keep us on our toes. I uh, know that about that. Yeah. yeah. But again, grab a coat. What's today? More? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 452, about 69 degrees. And coming up next, a look at how Disney's Encanto did at the box office this weekend, plus a first look at Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Another good weekend at the box office for Disney and Ghostbusters, plus a look at the latest Spider Man animated film. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. My chance. I will save the magic. Disney's Encanto topped the box office for a second weekend, earning another $12.7 million. That's a better than 50% drop off from last weekend's debut, but not out of place for the typically slow weekend after Thanksgiving box office. We must protect our home. We must protect our family. It's also enough to push Encanto's global take to over $116 million. Have you missed us? It was a pretty good weekend for Ghostbusters Afterlife as well. It held on to second place and just crossed the $100 million mark domestically in three weeks of release. They all die fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. Spider-Man No Way Home is breaking records worldwide and it hasn't even opened yet. International ticket pre-sales in some countries are beating Avengers Endgame. Hello, Peter. It's already topped pandemic pre-sale records domestically. Spider-Man No Way Home opens December 17th. And REM guitarist Peter Buck is 65 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News.
And time now, it's 456 and about 69 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, at least 17 states now reporting cases of the Omicron variant. Why Dr. Anthony Fauci says there are signs it may be less severe for those infected. Plus, there's a new robot that's programmed to make lifelike facial expressions. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. And a live look at TransGuide right now. Flashing lights, 351604. That's about all we can see from this view. But uh, Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We say good morning to him coming up after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines right now. Latest on a crash where a car ended up under an 18 wheeler on the northeast side last night. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. New studies tell us more about the rapidly spreading Omicron variant as revised travel restrictions start today. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, you're starting your day. You might be heading out thinking, I don't need a jacket. Well, maybe not right now this minute, but you may want to pack one. Later on, you'll thank us later. You can send yes. us a little note or anything you want. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday the 6th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. I guess we should actually thank Mike. He's reminding us. We can do that. Yeah. Mike Osterhage, you get all the kudos this morning for the reminders. I was going to say uh, Christmas cookies. Be Christmas oh, cookies. Okay. We'll, we'll beg. Okay. Stuff like that. Yeah, do grab a coat uh, before you head out because temperatures, even though it is extremely warm and humid right now, I mean, we're 20, uh, almost 25 degrees above where we should be. 70 the dew points at 68 yet yeah, this is December by the way it is not uh what's the matter um I'm sorry, I was talking to Ralph over there in the oh. corner. Oh, I was, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I just realized some of our studio lights aren't on. You want me to steal second? I don't was think. That, he was yeah. all these yes. gestures. Hey, sorry about that. Maybe uh, they are. And uh, it feels more like it should, uh, what, September, August, something like that. And I don't know where this graphic just came from. So sorry about that one. And as far as the uh, aquifer yesterday's reading, it did not change. And the allergens, we do have a moderate amount of mold out there. We also have a bunch of fog hanging around this morning. Visibility has definitely dropped down. It is down to pea soup in parts of the area. Head out 90 in toward Castroville as well as Hondo. Uh, zero visibility right now. Castroville quarter mile in Hondo and Stinson down to three miles and it continues to get thick and stay th very thick out toward Rock Springs Junction and Del Rio and there is a dense fog advisory for portions of the hill country up until seven o'clock this morning and then the front's going to be moving on through here. The timing of it uh, obviously a little sooner in the hill country and roughly nine o'clock here in town. You see that little right there. That, like I said, you kind of blink and you miss it. And a few more showers off to the uh, kind of the right hand side of that front. That's the front working its way down through here. And just by looking at that radar picture, rain is not going to be a big issue with this. There's going to be a couple of showers that get popped up or get squeezed out, if you will. Maybe a few more up around Austin. That'll be about it. But very warm and humid this morning. Front comes through here. Temperature is going to be dropping down throughout the day. It's going to be very, very blustery. Winds out of the north to northeast about 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. So, yes, pack a coat before you head out the door this morning and then cold start tomorrow morning. It's going to be heating up the rest of the week near record high temperatures on Friday. We'll be in the neighborhood Thursday and then it's going to be back to December by the weekend as far as temperatures are concerned. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Getting ready to hit the roads on this Monday. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, morning, sir. How's your weekend? Hey, great, Mike. A little too short for me, but you know what? Happy to be here with you guys. And if you're still at home waking up, here's what you can expect right now. If you plan on heading out the door in the next few moments, let's get a closer look here at 35 at loop 1604 where we see some flashing lights over here. If we can bring the camera a little bit closer, uh, you can see that we do actually have some construction crews. Thankfully, uh, this is not a crash that we're looking at this early early in the morning. However, it has led to that portion of the highway here to be closed there off Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of a buildup right there along those eastbound lanes. However, keep in mind those sex side crews started around nine last night, so hopefully we can see them wrapping up here before we start to see more folks getting their morning started. Let's take a jump back over here into town because we do have a stalled vehicle off I-10 eastbound at Callahan Road, not causing any issues, thankfully, but of course, make sure that you give those drivers plenty of room when you see them stranded along the highway especially when it's still dark outside. Another jump does so the wider look that is uh, that we do have a few stalled vehicles out, but at this hour, the main issue is going to be the construction spots, and we're going to have more time to talk about that a little bit later, but the big one there is going to be right there on 1604, uh, right at Lookout Road. Let's go ahead and take you to those inbound times because we're not seeing any delays at this hour. If you plan on traveling,
traveling to San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities. Right now, if you're coming in from Bernie on I-10, just 25 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area, so not too bad there. 27 minutes from Bull Verde and 281 and just 26 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels. Let's take one last look at Trans Guide. We're going to get to more construction spots for this Monday morning. We'll have that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Bear County fire crews responded to a crash last night after officials say a car got trapped under an 18 wheeler. Happened in the 14,000 block of I-10 near 1518 in Shirts around 10 p.m. The driver of the vehicle was taken to a hospital. Fire crews say he was awake and talking to emergency crews at the time of the crash. No official word on his condition, though. Traffic in the area was reduced down to one lane for a time. This morning, health officials say the coronavirus Omicron variant is rapidly spreading throughout the country. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. This morning, the Omicron variant spreading rapidly around the globe and in the U.S. Cases are now confirmed in at least 17 states. A new preliminary study suggests Omicron may have borrowed genetic material from the common cold, making it more infectious. And though it may be more transmissible, reports in South Africa where Omicron emerged indicate hospitalization rates have not increased alarmingly. But top infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci warns they still need more information. But we really got to be careful before we make any determinations. But thus far, the signals are a bit encouraging regarding the severity. One case closely monitored 30-year-old Peter McGinn from Minnesota, who tested positive for the Omicron variant after attending an anime convention in New York late November. When he flew home, he said he started feeling mild symptoms. Kind of feeling that tired. I was, I kind of felt bad for about a day. When McGinn learned his friend tested positive for COVID, he tested as well, though he was fully vaccinated and received a booster. About half of his group of 30 friends tested positive. Did my absolute best to follow the guidelines. I had my mask on the entire time. Health officials continue to urge Americans to get vaccinated or booster shots. According to the CDC, 6 million people have received a shot since Friday. Meanwhile, a new study with J&J &J shows receiving their booster on top of an original Pfizer vaccine prompts a strong immune response. It signals mixing and matching vaccines could be promising. And starting today, all international travelers must show proof of a negative COVID-19 test the day before boarding to enter into the U.S. A travel ban is still in place for eight African countries. M1, ABC News, Washington. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin will speak in a video conference tomorrow. There's no word yet on how long that meeting will last. The talks come as tensions escalate between the U.S. and Russia over a Russian troop buildup on the Ukrainian border. Nearly 100,000 Russian soldiers are said to be on the border of Ukraine. A plumber who found that large sum of money inside the walls of a Houston megachurch now he says he should get a reward for finding it. Houston police say the discovery could be linked back to a case in 2014 after someone stole $600,000 from Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church. The plumber who found the stash says although he didn't solve the case, he solved some very key important clues at the time. Uh, at the time of the theft in 2014, Crime Stoppers offered a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. However, because of how the plumber found the money, the expired statute of limitations on this particular case, the man is now officially owed, is not officially owed any money. Here at home, as we head into the final day of Hanukkah, San Antonio is joining the Jewish community in the celebration. A large crowd gathered at Arneson River Theater uh, for the 24th annual Hanukkah on the River. The celebration is coming almost a month after the 83rd anniversary of the Kristallnacht when the Jewish Federation of San Antonio hosted a Unity Over Hate event to bring the community together. It's especially meaningful to be able to get out in the community, in public, and celebrate a Jewish holiday with the rest of the community as well. And Rabbi Block hopes that every person who joined in this celebration will walk away knowing they are important and have a purpose in this world no one else can fill. He says that's the message of Hanukkah. 508, about 69 degrees for now. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why Facebook Messenger is getting a new bill splitting feature. And next, some, uh, some of the big moments from this weekend's rock and roll marathon, including Steph's participation. <laughs> she grounded out and finished the race. <laughs> finished, yes, finished. That's the, the, the important part, right? <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, starting almost as humid as yesterday morning, but the day will definitely change. We'll be right back.
More than 18,000 runners hopefully recovering, Christ Steph, after taking on the annual Rock and Roll Marathon this weekend. The event shut down parts of downtown, and this year's theme was Fiesta in December. So the race returned in person this year after it was canceled last year because of the pandemic. Organizers are calling it a success, citing the big turnout. And though it's nice to get to the finish line first, for some participants, the race was just about finding joy from personal growth. And I have never run an event like this before. You know what I mean? I couldn't even go around the block in 2015. So now, six years later, we've gotten better, have overcome the heart attack, so did 14 half marathons. And as for the full marathon winners for the men's competition, this was San Antonio native Colin Mars. And for women, it was ID Gall from North Carolina. And Steph finished the race yes. in, what would you say, your time, time was two? Uh, two hours and five minutes, oh my which, gosh. which is good for, Still, for me. And you said the weather was grueling it, for runners. It was super, it was super humid out there. But the medals this year yeah, are pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It's like kind of like what they were talking about, Fiesta, you know, in December. And right. that's, you know, pretty cool. This is a, I, I like how they always kind of like personalize it to, mm. you know, San Antonio. But this is the half one. There's a, the full's got a different medal. Sure. Yeah. Does that have bite marks on it from finishing the race? Uh, no. No? Okay. All right. <laughs> I was just so happy to, <laughs> to, to walk out finish. of there. Yeah. I, I, I didn't even think about, like, doing any cool poses or anything like that. You're just too, it's too busy panting, right? Yes, pretty yes, much. Understood. Pretty well, much. proud of you for finishing. Thank 513, you. about 69 degrees. And still ahead, why Spotify is removing a popular comedian's content. And we'll check out this humanoid robot that makes eerily lifelike facial expressions. Whoa. Will Smith was right. <laughs>
Old Pearsall Road. That is current until Wednesday, December 8th, so keep that in mind from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Overall, the morning has been busy, but thankfully there's no major crashes that are going to cause any issues for that early morning drive. Just be sure to give yourself some patience, especially if you're driving through this area off 35 at Loop 1604, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank You're welcome. You, Stephen, we're looking <laughs> forward to the changes. Yeah, but look at that picture. This is uh, from uh, South Cam looking up to the north and now different situation than this view from uh, the camera over there by the airport. But there is some fog out there and visibility has definitely dropped down in places. Kerrville's down to three quarters of a mile as of right now. Hints of fog around New Braunfels, Randolph, Port S.A., Stinson. But then you head out west on 90, Castroville, Hondo. It is just pea soup and a good chunk of the hill country right now. Quarter mile visibility up in Rock Springs and just a half mile over there in Junction and the dense fog advisory again for portions of the hill country up until 7 o'clock this morning. And even though obviously there's some counties like Medina County not under dense fog advisory, you've got some of the thickest fog out there. So uh, just be on the lookout for the next few hours. And again, we're watching a not very impressive front work its way on through here. Impressive as far as any rain. Got a couple of more showers uh, further up to the northeast and that's all kind of sliding down to the southeast, but it's just kind of a broken line of rain out there and that's what we're going to be expecting as this thing moves on through. Again, humidity is very, very high this morning. Dew points are way up there. It's like almost late summer kind of humidity this morning and then by 8 o'clock, there's the front moving through the hill country and with the Dense fog advisory till seven. Once that front moves on through, that's just going to once the humidity drops off the front, the uh, fog, pardon me, is going to really be just getting on out of here. And then by about nine o'clock here in town is when the front moves on through. Winds will shift around. The humidity starts to drop off and temperatures are going to be dropping off as well. So grab a coat before you head out the door because we'll only be in the about mid 50s by late afternoon, plus very windy conditions and the dry air is going to be sticking around here and that's going to allow for temperatures to really drop down by tomorrow morning. So there's the cold air, obviously 27 in. Obviously, I was going to say that 27 is not going to be heading on in here, but we will get much cooler temperatures coming on in and we'll be in the mid 40s by tomorrow, but it's not going to last all that long. It'll be day, couple of days. That'll be about it. Humidity makes a big return by the end of the week, and that is going to be teamed up with temperatures that are going to be flirting with record highs by the end of the week. Yeah, we're going to go almost a 40 degree temperature difference between the low tomorrow morning and then the high on Friday afternoon up to 85 degrees. There's all the clouds hanging around here right now. We're going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout the rest of today, but temperatures, like I said, will definitely be dropping down. So we'll be down to 63 by noon. Again, we're in the 70s right now, upper 60s, 70s, but the front moves through and that knocks temperatures down very windy throughout the rest of the day. And then by late afternoon, only 55 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. We're going to keep some clouds around tonight, so that's actually going to keep us from getting as cold as what we could get if we didn't have a blanket on top of us. And then we get up to 65 tomorrow. So good looking day tomorrow, a lot more sunshine. And then notice how the low temperature stays in the mid 50s by Wednesday morning up to 75, 82 Thursday, 84 on Friday. The record both Thursday and Friday is 85 degrees. Then the front's going to move through here late Friday, early Saturday. So another upside down day on Saturday. Good looking weekend coming up here, kind of fallish. Yeah. Once we get that next front moving on through here. But yeah, definitely again, take a coat today for the little ones. Even though they won't want to wear it this morning. You don't need to wear it this morning. But mm -hmm. Pack it in the today. bag. Yep. Have you guys noticed in the last couple of days, some of the leaves around here have really started to pop red and orange? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a nice little finishing touch there for fall. Yeah, the, la the last wave of fall. I think. Yes, before we head into our brief Texas mm -hmm. winter. Right now, 523, about 69 degrees. And still heading your morning spotlight. A first look at the tease trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Teaser, plus Tom Holland gets ready to play Fred Astaire. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, one, five, two, fireball six. Daily four numbers, one, two, six, nine, fireball four. Cash five, 18, 20, 22, 27, 32. And Lotto, Texas, 15, 17, 20, 27, 52, 53. Your Powerball number, Powerball number, sorry, 10, 40, 45, 56, 67, Powerball two, power play two. Good luck. There's plenty of movie news to start your week. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. What? 
What? Uh -huh. Ana de Armas broke out opposite Chris Evans in 2019's Knives Out. Now they're teaming up again in the romantic action adventure Ghosted. De Armas is replacing Scarlett Johansson, who was originally set to star in the project. Marvel has given us our first look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the sequel to the Oscar-winning Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And since Marvel is billing this as part one, we can expect at least one more animated adventure after this film opens next October. It was my opportunity to try things. Speaking of Spidey, Tom Holland, the current live-action Spider-Man, is stepping into Fred Astaire's dancing shoes. Holland is set to play Astaire in a biopic about the legendary big-screen dancer, actor, and singer. Holland got his start dancing on the London stage and went viral channeling both Gene Kelly's Singing in the Rain routine and Rihanna's Umbrella on Lip Sync Battle. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, about 69 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about new stricter travel rules that go into effect today for international passengers coming into the U.S. Plus, our parents are using unique and high-tech tactic to make sure high-demand items make it under the tree in time for Christmas. And are you an early bird or a night owl? And ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you once and for all, which is a better schedule to have. Making headlines this morning, new international travel restrictions go into effect today as the country is seeing more than 100,000 new COVID cases each day. A bar fight ends in death here on the south side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. But the suspects in this case aren't even old enough to get inside. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, kind of a humid start to your day again, but don't be fooled, you're gonna wanna pack your jacket this morning. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, it is December 6th. Yeah, if you feel silly right now grabbing a coat, you're gonna be the smartest person in your car later. Yeah, that's right. You need to definitely pack it in the car, um, you know, maybe even a sweater or so, just to be prepared a little bit. Mike? Yeah, because it's gonna be windy, we've got a front moving on through here in about, oh, say, three hours or so, three and a half hours here in town, obviously sooner in the hill country and boy, it can't come soon enough. Now we've got very warm, humid conditions, but it looks pretty good visibility wise here in town as of right now, but portions of the area do have a lot of very thick fog. Temperature stands at 70. A normal low is right around mid 40s, so you can do the math on that one. Dew points are way up there in the upper 60s. We've got a wind out of the uh, south right now, and that's what's helping with any fog or not fog here in town, but out in portions of the hill country from uh, Gillespie County over toward Del Rio. We do have a dense fog advisory up until seven o'clock and even where there's not the dense fog advisory, such as in Medina County, you got some pea soup fog there. Castorville zero visibility, Hondo quarter mile, three quarters at uh, Kerrville right now, Rock Springs, Del Rio. Yeah, it's very thick in the hill country. Front's going to move through first, obviously in the hill country, and that's going to just kind of sweep that fog on out of there and you can sort of see the front right along this line right here. We've got some pretty good showers that are developing north obviously of Austin and most of the rain associated with this front is going to be further off to the east but we'll still have a couple little sprinkly showers right along that front as it moves on through here. So don't be surprised by that. Um, Tenth of an inch, uh, two tenths of an inch, something like that in spots, and that'll be about it. But again, more off to the northeast. Mold is on the uh, moderate side from yesterday's reading. 63 at noon, 55 then later on this afternoon. So temperatures are going to make a steady downward progression throughout the day, and winds going to be picking up once that front moves on through here. It is going to be blustery today, northeasterly, 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. Very cool tomorrow morning, and then very hot. Yeah hot by the end of the week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, got some problems out there, right, sir? Yeah, you know, Mike, if we are going to be heading out the door in the next few moments, keep this in mind. This is all Loop 410 at Old Pearsall Road. We do have some construction crews that are out there working on some paving operations. Now, keep in mind, Texan has reported that this should have wrapped around 5. We are now looking at about 30 minutes after that, so uh, not sure if they're experiencing any delay, but thankfully this is not causing any slowdowns for that early morning drive. Uh, but again, something to keep in mind, especially if you travel through 
through this area a little later this morning. You bet we're going to keep our eyes on this throughout the morning. Let's go ahead and take a jump to the map, though, because we do still have this stall off I-35 northbound at Riddiman, not causing any issues. It's still early on, but of course, when you see those drivers, give them plenty of room. Uh, and this highway portion here off Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road still closed there due to some construction. So uh, that has been the main issue of the morning. Some of these construction spots, but as we take a wider look at the map, we're not seeing a lot of yellow, orange, or red, so we're not seeing lots of slowdowns anywhere. The lanes are pretty much green on the screen, and that's what we like to see. Let's go ahead and take you to those inbound times. If you plan on heading into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, right now coming in from Seguin, pretty green, I-10, uh, with 28 minutes at this hour. It's not looking bad coming from La Verde with 22 uh, on 87, and if you are traveling in from Floresville on uh, uh, from 37, that is 28 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. So again, no, not a lot of problems out there, but just keep in mind, we still have these construction crews working to wrap up this uh, paving operations. We'll continue to keep our eyes on this throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a shooting outside a Southside bar has left a man dead. San Antonio police are still investigating, but believe it was related to a fight involving two women. Katrina Weber is live at the scene on Pleasanton Road south of Loop 410. And Katrina, have police made any arrests? Well, according to the officers here, they're still trying to sort everything out. Uh, one officer told me, in his words, that a bunch of people have been taken into custody. Some of those, though, we assume are witnesses. I can tell you right now, there's still a lot of cars here. Some of those people have gone downtown with police to answer questions. We still have crime scene tape up here outside this bar. And one of the patrons told me that this bar is known as Kubilete Bar, although there are no signs on the outside of the building. But this all happened around 2 o'clock this morning. I have some video to show you as police responded to the scene uh, for this uh, shooting, this deadly shooting. Uh, a sergeant did tell us that there were two women involved in a fight at this bar. One woman's husband apparently got in the middle of it to try to break things up, and then they say that the other woman called her two teenage sons to the scene. Now, at some point, police say that those teenagers shot the husband of the other woman, killing him. Uh, police tell us that those teenagers are very young, about uh, 18 and 15 years old. And so they, uh, right now, though, are trying to figure out exactly what happened to see if those stories hold up. We do have detectives here inside the bar uh, talking to some people who are still here at the scene. But again, all of this still fluid, still under investigation as they try to sort things out. So we're not sure yet whether those teenagers may be among the people in custody and whether they are facing charges and they've been arrested at this point. We are trying to find that out and we'll let you know as soon as police tell us. Reporting live from the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you as always. Well, new stricter travel rules start today for passengers coming into the United States. As CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, this is happening as the country is once again seeing a rise in new COVID-19 cases. More than 100,000 new COVID-19 cases per day. That's what the U.S. is now averaging, the highest number of reported infections in two months. 99.9% .9 of them are the Delta variant. While Delta remains a threat, U.S. health officials have detected the new Omicron coronavirus variant in more than a dozen states. And starting today, new travel rules for anyone entering the U.S. Nearly all passengers must have a negative COVID-19 test one day before departure. Any foreign national who travels to the U.S. must be fully vaccinated. And the federal mask requirement for people in travel hubs like airports and those using public transportation like planes, trains, and buses will remain through March. We'll be able to manage the uh, the new testing requirement and, and very much support the extension of the mask mandate. Travel industry leaders say any restrictions should be placed on individual passengers, not entire countries. Right now, the U.S. has a travel ban on South Africa and several other Southern African nations. But officials say those bans are being reevaluated every day. We need to figure out how to balance not only uh, the economy and the health concerns uh, simultaneously, but we also need to, to think about uh, making sure that we can still welcome international travelers here to the U.S. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. The Biden administration expected to announce a diplomatic boycott of the 2022 Beijing Olympics this week. While the move would still allow U.S. athletes to compete, no U.S. government representatives would be in attendance. 
Biden told reporters last month he was contemplating such a move to protest China's human rights abuses. Last month, the virtual summit between Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping did not result in any significant progress. The diplomatic boycott designed to put more pressure on China to reform its policies before the Winter Games began on February 4th. The last time the U.S. fully boycotted the Olympics was 1980. Here in Texas, a man is dead after two Houston police officers hit him with their patrol car while on the high-speed chase this weekend. The officers involved are now on administrative leave. According to the police department, the officers were trying to help pursue suspects connected to a stolen vehicle and aggravated robbery when they lost control of their cruiser. The vehicle ended up on the sidewalk hitting a pedestrian unrelated to the case who has not been identified. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Three of the five suspects were caught. 539, about 69 degrees. And still ahead, Honda recalling thousands of its SUVs. We're going to tell you why and which ones are affected. And next, how some parents are turning to some unconventional methods to make sure presents end up under the tree amid that supply chain crisis. And taking a look outside with a live cam. 69 degrees, kind of humid, not like December, but later on, hmm, things will change. It'll be more like December. We'll be right back. Welcome back 542 this morning. There is a chance that the supply chain crisis is affecting your Christmas list. Shortages of popular toys leading some parents to turn to shopping unconventional methods to make sure that the right gifts land under the tree. ABC's Deidre Bolton is has more. It's one of the busiest shopping seasons of the year and the clock is ticking to get some of those must have gifts. Parents go to any lengths to get their kids what they want for Christmas. With the supply chain crunch and ships sitting off our coasts, some products are scarce, leading to more bot activity than ever. These bots are so much faster than you and I are. And so if you've had this experience, if you're after something that's very popular and you've seen it in stock, you may have tried, you've gotten it into your cart, and then suddenly it's snatched away from you at the last minute. That is all these bots working. And the price gouge on these resale products, not in the Christmas spirit. One collector sees the pricing pressure firsthand when looking for a special Pokemon anniversary item. Retails for $120 and you'll see it on eBay for over $300, even $600 even. So it's insane. The bots are fast, but you can use social media to stay one click ahead. The reason why I, you have to use social media is because the, the key to buying these consoles is to knowing when the retailers restock. You need to be early in the digital line to be ready. Experts say turn on push notifications for social media accounts that announce new item availability and releases. Another tip, join rewards or insider programs at a well-known retailer. They will fill your order as soon as possible. Retailers are working very hard uh, to give human beings uh, their level shot. The resale practices used by bots aren't illegal, but experts say buyer beware if thinking of purchasing with one. If you buy a PlayStation through a bot, what happens if it breaks? You know, what are your return rights? How do you file a warranty claim? Think about those things as well. And that was ABC's Deirdre Bolton reporting. Right now it is 544, about 69 degrees. And coming up next, what you need to know about a recall affected hundreds of thousands of Honda vehicles. And welcome back. It's 547. In your morning consumer headlines, cruise lines may be taking a price gamble thanks to the pandemic. With shorter turnaround times for ships to set sail, cruise companies are offering deep discounts for passengers. The Wall Street Journal reports that Carnival and Royal Caribbean are slashing ticket prices by up to 40 percent. Those discounts could continue for the first half of next year. Recent rallies in the stock market might have you thinking about making a move with your portfolio. However, experts say in order to avoid paying capital gains or taxes after selling stock, just might be prudent to rebalance your investments. USA Today says rebalancing to more conservative assets like bonds could also help some investors navigate a volatile market. Honda has issued a recall on about 725,000 SUVs. The car maker says there is an issue with the hood on 2019 Honda Passports, 2016 to 2019 Honda Pilots, and 
2017 to 2020 Honda Ridgelines. Honda says there's a problem with the hood latch that could cause the hood to open while you're driving. No accident or injuries have been reported. Uh, owners of these cars, though, should receive a notice by mid-January. Honda says it will not charge for those repairs. Right now it's 548 on your Monday morning. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos, see how things are looking out there on the roadways. Hi, Stephen. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Same to you. Thank you. Feels good to be here. <laughs> well, you know what? If you have to get your morning started early, uh, like the rest of us here on GMSA, let's look at what you can expect right now from these shots at Transguide 35 at Loop 1604. We had some flashing lights here due to some construction. I-10 at Presa. It does look like it's building up a little bit, and some of these shots stuff does show that traffic is light in a lot of other areas, but let's take you to the map because there are some issues out there that we want you to be aware of before you get out on the roadways. Uh, a stalled vehicle still detected out here off I-35 northbound at Ritterman Road. Uh, according to Texas, that's detected as a high stalled vehicle, so it could possibly cause issues uh, when we have first responders out there working to assist that driver. But thankfully, as of right now at 549, we're not seeing any buildup of traffic in that area. Let's take a jump up here because I just heard from our friends at Transguide that this highway closed off Loop 6 16 to 4 eastbound at Lookout Road is due to some construction, but crews should be picking up uh, momentarily. So thankfully that won't be causing any issues as the morning gets going. So let's take a jump over here because we have another stall off US 281 southbound at Thousand Oaks. A jump down over here does show we have the same issue off I-10 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. So Right now, that does look like it could be the trending problem at this hour. Just a bunch of stalled vehicles, but we're still keeping our eye on some of those construction spots as we just showed you. One last look around town, 281 at San Pedro, 1604 at Petrenko. Pretty quiet there, but again, the morning is just getting started, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Can't wait for things to change. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be changing in the next couple of hours. Again, been telling you all morning long, getting ready to head out the front door, take a jacket with you, even though you do not need it right now. And this is the uh, south cam, and as you can see, you can barely see the skyline. Just a couple of lights there. there on top of the Alamo Dome and some of the lights of downtown. But we do have a lot of uh, low clouds, a lot of fog around. At the airport, visibility is still pretty good. But then it gets thicker going south, Stinson, Pleasanton, and especially going out to the west. Head out 90, head out 10, you're going to run into a lot of fog. Rock Springs now down to zero visibility. Same thing with Castroville, Uvalde, two miles, one at uh, Del Rio, as well as Fredericksburg. And dense fog advisory up until 7 o'clock for portions of the hill country. And obviously, even south of this, outside of the advisory, we've got a lot of very, very thick fog, which will be sticking around for the next couple of hours. The, uh, the front is just about to move into the hill country. Got some pretty good showers and storms up here. If you're heading up 35, you may run into a few of those. And most of the heavier rain is going to be further off to the east and to the northeast. And we'll have just this kind of scattered broken line right along that front. So temperature is at 70 right now. The normal low is 44. Now we'll be down there tomorrow morning down in the mid 40s where we should be. But we've got uh, you know mid upper 60s throughout much of the area. Of course, the humidity remains extremely high. And what's interesting is dew point temperatures compared to yesterday have stayed about the same up a couple of degrees down a couple of degrees here and there, but up around junction dew points have gone up 10 to 15 degrees. Now this map tomorrow, this graphic, these numbers are going to be negative uh, 30, 35 degrees. That's how much the dew point is going to be dropping off in behind this front. So here's computer model. This is one of those with kind of the broad brush, so it's not going to be this like widespread of coverage. And again, the majority of the rain is going to be further off to the east and to the northeast as the front moves on through here. We're still going to keep a lot of clouds in behind. There may be a couple of sprinkles around tomorrow morning. Then we're going to be clearing out in the afternoon and Tomorrow's probably going to be one of the sunnier days. We'll have more sunshine later on in the week as well, but still a fair amount of clouds hanging around here. Friday, and what this map doesn't show is the fact that it's going to be just blazing hot on Friday for this time of year. We're going to be flirting with uh, record high temperatures on Friday. And then another front's going to move on through here. It may try and squeeze out a couple of light little sprinkles early on Saturday morning in the wee hours of the morning. That would be about it. So today, Noon, 63 degrees. Grab a coat right now because then by this afternoon, we're only going to be in the mid 50s and maybe upper 40s in portions of the hill country. And it's also going to be very windy. So there's definitely going to be kind of a nip in the air, if you will. And then 45 tomorrow morning. So back down to normal. And in the afternoon, just about normal. Good looking day tomorrow. Then we warm right back up. 75 Wednesday, 84 on Friday. The record's 85. Wow. Back down to the 60s, though, for the weekend. <laughs> May I make an observation without being judged here? 
mountain cedar season is running behind, and I'm okay with that. That's okay. Yeah, I had to yeah. bring that up. Now, I, it, I, it will be interesting to see, though, with this front moving on mm -hmm, through here, mm -hmm. if it kind of kicks things up a little, because it's going to be very windy, and then the next one, right, Saturday. Traditionally, it's a front that gets us down in the 30s. It really gets that cedar going, so I don't know if we're there yet, but now I'm worried that things are going to be later into February for the season itself. <laughs> Again, from a sufferer, I mean, I'm the poster boy for Mountain Cedar Aww. sufferers. We I'm, like, see. I'm like, hey, what did I do? Uh, 554, <laughs> about 69 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, one, five, two, fireball six, and daily four, one, two, six, nine, fireball four. Cash five numbers, 18, 20, 22, 27, 32. Lotto Texas, 15, 17, 20, 27, 52, 53, and Powerball. 10, 40, 45, 56, 67, Powerball 2, Power Play also 2. Good luck. I'm going to read this just the way our producer wrote it. Where's the best place to see Christmas lights in Texas this year? Of course, it's the San Antonio Riverwalk. Duh. We all knew that, but San Antonio Riverwalk now is officially top Yelp's list of the top 20 places to see Christmas lights in Texas. Two other San Antonio spots made the year's, year's Yelp list, the Pearl Historic District and, of course, the Alamo. You can check out the full list on our website at ksat.com. Still hot on GMSA, our young San Antonio Spurs growing up fast. Silver and black are red hot right now. We'll get you ready for all their upcoming games this week. They have a busy schedule. And an argument at a bar turns into a deadly shooting. The shooter still on the run as we speak. Trina Weber will join us live with the very latest. Trans guide right now, flashing lights, 35 near Bampsey. We'll try to figure out what's going on out there right now. Stephen Cavazos will have an update coming up right here live on GMSA. San Antonio police say two teenagers may face charges related to a deadly shooting outside the Southside Bar. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. New studies tell us more about the rapidly spreading Omicron variant as revised travel restrictions start today. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting your day at 69 degrees. We've been telling you guys this all morning, don't be fooled by the temperatures now. You're going to need your jacket later on. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. It is Monday, December 6th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's going to be kind of a roller coaster ride, I think, this week. That might be fair to say. If we listen to Mike's forecast this morning, we're going to sound brilliant to our friends uh, because <laughs> yeah. we know what's going on. Big changes are coming. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, in the next couple of hours, we're kind of tracking the front right now uh -huh. as it's working its way in toward the hill country. And yeah, throughout the week, it's going to be cold, windy, and then it's going to be hot, and then it's going to be cooler again. So. Yeah. Layers. It's called yes. Welcome to uh, South Texas ah. as far as weather. All right, here's our South Cam, and yeah, you can barely make out the uh, the uh, land. What am I talking about? The uh, uh, skyline? Skyline, thank you. Wow. I'll take skyline for 500. Okay, I've been off a couple of days. Uh, 69 <laughs> right now here in town, mid 60s in portions of the Hill Country. And we do have a dense fog advisory for parts of the Hill Country up until 7 o'clock this morning. But then even where this dense fog advisory is not in effect, there is just some pea soup out there. Uh, Castorville, Hondo, Uvalde now has a lot of very thick fog. Also heading in toward uh, Kerrville, Stinson, hints of it. And it's dropped down somewhat in New Braunfels. We're now seeing specks of fog there. A little bit of reduced visibility out at the airport. But again, the majority of it is out in portions of the hill country as of right now. The front, notice how these showers are starting to definitely build up there right along 35, and those will continue to work their way down to the southeast. And then the line of rain is basically non-existent. As this works its way on through here, we'll start to see a few more of these showers kind of filling in right along that line. So there will be a couple of showers as the front works its way on through, but not really a whole lot of it. Most of that's going to be well off to the east. Molds on the moderate side. Updated count's going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. So temperatures right now are in the upper 60s, right around 70. And then the front's going to move through here in town. 
right about nine o'clock, obviously sooner in portions of the hill country and temperatures will then continue to drop down. So we'll be down right around the low 60s by noon and then continue to drop down from there. Only about mid 50s by the time, uh, well, by the time the sun's thinking about setting later on this afternoon, we'll still keep a lot of clouds around here. But again, very, very breezy conditions with winds out of the northeast at 15, 25 miles per hour. We are then going to be flirting with record high temperatures by the end of the week. I don't mean to smile about that, but then we will have another front moving on through here. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and still got those problems out there? Uh, we got new problems now, Mike. I think we're seeing too many flashing lights for this Monday morning. Take a look right now. This is a shot from Transguide provided to us right now. This is 35 at Bamsey. Uh, this is a shot again that we're looking at here of what appears to be a crash on the Axis Road. Uh, you can see we have first responders that have blocked that portion there, and some of them are on the road. Uh, that vehicle detected right there, and it also looks like there's some debris there. Uh, seen some sort of truck a little further down with their emergency lights on as well, so it's unclear exactly what caused this crash, but hopefully those drivers are okay now that they're receiving some assistance. Uh, but let's go ahead and take you right to the map to see how that's going to be impacting traffic. Uh, this right now is detected off I-35 Southbound and Winco Drive. You can see that we're not seeing any delays just yet, but keep in mind, it is still very early on when the morning starts to pick up. That's when traffic does as well, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we still have this stalled not too far from there off I-35 northbound at Riddiman Road uh, and we're seeing slow progress there of a uh, 16 to 4 eastbound at Lookout Road. Again, our friends at Transguide do tell us that this will be picking up pretty soon, but we're starting to see that pickup of traffic as well. So make sure that you are packing that patience this morning. Wider look at the map does show that we have a few stalls that crash and those construction spots. So overall, Monday morning traffic is definitely looking like that a Monday on, on the roadways. Uh, let's go ahead and bring you to those inbound times, though, because we do have some relief there green across the board right now coming in from Pleasanton 27 minutes at this hour, 16 minutes from 35 in Lytle and 19 minutes off coming in from Highway 90 from Cashville. This is to the downtown San Antonio area. One last look here at Transguide again, 35 at Bamsey. Watch out for those flashing lights. We'll continue to keep our eyes on the road guys. Thank you, Steve. Well, what began as a bar fight has become the subject of a homicide investigation. San Antonio police say a man was shot and killed outside of a Southside bar overnight. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Pleasanton Road south of Loop 410. And Katrina, do police know what led up to this? Well, they do tell us that there were two women who were involved in a bar fight, actually a fight outside this bar here on Pleasanton Road a little bit earlier, but they're not exactly sure what led to that fight. It did escalate, though, with uh, the killing of one of the women's husbands. Now, let me give you a look at what's happening here. Uh, just in the last half hour, we've had a lot of the cars that we had here clear out. We have a couple of tow trucks here now uh, that presumably they're flatbed trucks, and so there are a couple of vehicles that may be somehow tied to this situation and they're going to be towed away. I also have some video uh, from earlier this morning. This happened about two o'clock. Now at some point this bar was or still is called Kubilete. This is on Pleasanton Road south of Loop 410. Police say that there were two women arguing out in the parking lot. Uh, one woman's husband got involved to try to break things up and police say the other woman then called her two sons to the scene and they believe that at least one of those sons fired shots killing the other woman's husband. So they are still looking for those suspects at this point. We found that out from a detective earlier this morning uh, that they have not made any arrests just yet. They did take a lot of people who were here as witnesses into custody and they are still questioning some of them. But again, uh, here at the scene, it does look like they're about to tow away at least one of the vehicles in this parking lot, perhaps connected to uh, this situation here with this, uh, this shooting. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. An update now to a story we first brought you on GMSA. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has released the name of a woman allegedly killed by her roommate last week. She is identified as 35-year-old Miranda Kennedy. That report shows that she died from multiple blunt force injuries to the head. Kennedy's body was found about 20 miles away from her home inside the trunk of a vehicle. Her roommate, 58-year-old Renee Denor Devora, was in an hours-long standoff with SAPD on Friday and is now facing a murder charge. The arrest affidavit states Devora confessed to killing her.
At least 15 people are dead, 27 still missing after Mount Semeru's eruption in Indonesia. It happened after a river dam burst because of lava and heavy rain. Hundreds of villagers are being forced to move away from location. An aerial view showed the areas of villages where lava spilled are da badly damaged and covered by volcanic material from the hot clouds of Mount Semeru's avalanches. Search and rescue operations are ongoing. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin will speak in a video conference tomorrow. Right now, there's no word on how long that meeting will last. The talks come as tensions escalate between the U.S. and Russia over a Russian troop buildup on the Ukrainian border. Nearly 100,000 Russian soldiers are said to be on the border of Ukraine. Health officials say the coronavirus Omicron variant is rapidly spreading throughout the country. And a new study is now showing us just how transmissible and dangerous the new variant might be as health officials continue to urge Americans to get vaccinated. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Good morning. As more states confirm cases of the Omicron variant, demand for vaccinations and boosters is at the highest level in seven months. This morning, the Omicron variant spreading rapidly around the globe and in the U.S. Cases are now confirmed in at least 17 states. A new preliminary study suggests Omicron may have borrowed genetic material from the common cold, making it more infectious. And though it may be more transmissible, reports in South Africa where Omicron emerged indicate hospitalization rates have not increased alarmingly. But top infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci warns they still need more information. But thus far, the signals are a bit encouraging regarding the severity. One case closely monitored 30-year-old Peter McGinn from Minnesota, who tested positive for the Omicron variant after attending an anime convention in New York late November. When he flew home, he said he started feeling mild symptoms kind of feeling that tired. I was, I kind of felt bad for about a day. Meanwhile, a new study with J&J &J shows receiving their booster on top of an original Pfizer vaccine prompts a strong immune response. It signals mixing and matching vaccines could be promising. And starting today, all international travelers must show proof of a negative COVID-19 test the day before boarding to enter into the U.S. A travel ban is still in place for eight African countries. M1 ABC News, Washington. So cruise lines may be taking a price gamble thanks to the pandemic with shorter turnaround times for ships to set sail. Cruise companies are offering deep discounts for passengers. Wall Street Journal reports that Carnival and Royal Caribbean are slashing prices by up to 40 percent and that those discounts could continue for the first half of next year. And as we head into the final day of Hanukkah, San Antonio is joining the Jewish community in the celebration. A large crowd of Jewish and non-Jewish people gathered at the Arneson River Theater yesterday for the 24th annual Hanukkah on the River. The celebration coming almost a month after the 83rd anniversary of Kristallnacht when the Jewish Federation of San Antonio hosted a Unity Over Hate event to bring the community together after anti-Semitic messages shook our city. As Hanukkah slowly comes to an end, that same message of unity rang true on the Riverwalk. It's especially meaningful to be able to get out in the community, in public, and celebrate a Jewish holiday with the rest of the community as well. And Rabbi Block hopes that every person who joined in this celebration this weekend walks away knowing they are important and have a purpose in this world no one else can fill. He says that's a message of Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Right now, just about 6, 11, 69 degrees. And were you downtown this weekend? If so, you probably saw a ton of runners taking to the streets. We're going to have a recap ahead. And that one blur that was Stephanie Cerna. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I was that fast. <laughs> I know you were. You think you were off your pace, but we're just proud you finished. Thank you, Mark. Of Thank course. You. Outside with live cam, very muggy, cold front on the way. Mike will have an ETA on GMSA. Six fourteen. Welcome back on a Monday morning. Topping today's tech bites, Facebook Messenger's new bill splitting feature. It's called Brace Yourselves Split Payments. Users can pay joint expenses they share with others like roommates. Once your info is in the app, it can be linked to your bank account. Tests on the system begin in the U.S. this week. And Spotify is not joking around about royalties. The service is pulling content from hundreds of popular comedians like Tiffany Haddish, Kevin Hart, and John Mulaney. The dispute comes as growing numbers of comedians are seeking to get paid royalties when their jokes are played on streaming services.
Well, more than 18,000 runners, including this one, are hopefully resting at home or behind a news desk after taking on the <laughs> annual rock and roll marathon this weekend. The event shut down parts of downtown and this year's theme was Fiesta in December. So the race returned in person this year after it was canceled last year because of the pandemic. Organizers are calling it a success, citing the big turnout. And though it's nice to get to the finish line for a lot of participants out there, the race was just about finding joy from personal growth. And I have never run an event like this before. You know what I mean? I couldn't even go around the block in 2015. So now, six years later, we've gotten better, have overcome the heart attack, so did 14 half marathons. And as for the full marathon winners for the men's competition, the San Antonio native Colin Mars, and for women, it was ID Gall from North Carolina. And of course, I was nowhere near the winner's oh, circle. Oh, but, that <laughs> but for That's me, a I, I got picture. a win with meeting up with my daughter Rooney and my family after the race. A lot of fun, a lot of people out there. Uh, you could kind of see the tower in the background, a little hazy there, but it was a lot of fun. And a big shout out to also Mario Oriana, our assistant news director, who yep. also ran, yeah. Miss Ayel Gomez, our photographer, uh, and then <coughs> on our web team, Rebecca Salinas also ran the half. And Mike Osterhage, your wife, yep. Bonnie, also <laughs> yep. running. And, yeah. and her run group, too. But the, the medals were trade. cool. Yeah, I mean, check so, out this. Very so this, San Antonio. These are the medals that we got. This is for the half, half marathon. So Bonnie right. got one of these as yep. well. Yep. Very uh -huh. cool. Uh, very in line with what is a dis, uh, the, the theme for Fiesta in December. There you go. Congratulations. Glad you finished. Thank I know it you. was not ideal weather. I mean, that, that takes a toll on the body, doesn't it? It, it really does. Um, I was talking to somebody earlier. I felt very lucky that we were doing the half because all the people doing the full had to endure it a little bit mm -hmm. longer. Some people collapsed, we're, we're, we're told, right? Yes, that's yeah. what we heard. So hopefully everybody's fine this morning. Oh, we sure hope so. Yes. All right. Well, cooler weather's on the way. We'll talk to Mike in just a moment. But first, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, congrats, Steph, on finishing. Thank that's you. a big accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a, a big accomplishment for me, that's for sure. I can barely do half a mile on the treadmill. Yeah, no, you can. I'm I working my way can, up. Stephen. I'm working my way up there, guys. <laughs> but uh, there right you now, go. get some incentive there. Oh, wait, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Everybody gets Congratulations. You just finished, Stephen. I wish go. I could wear it. Can I wear it? On. Okay, we'll just do this for the moment. Okay. And now hold it up. There you go. <laughs> Look, there <laughs> it is. Actually, you know, we do want to get to the roadways right now. I'm going to take this off for just a brief moment and put it back on for a second. Selfie, but we do want to take your attention right there at 410 at McCullough. We do have some traffic that was moving through there. Now, there was an incident that was reported, but thankfully it's not uh, causing any issues right now. It looks like traffic is moving through there pretty smoothly. Let's go ahead and take a look here on the map, though, because we do have some uh, crashes to talk about. 35 South and Winco Drive. I just checked the Trans Guide camera. Now, we're not seeing any issues in terms of delays at this hour. However, keep in mind, uh, this is on the frontage road lane and where there are still some first responders out there, so give yourself plenty of room. Let's take a jump up here because we do have a stall off 35 northbound at Riddiman Road and a jump over here does show we have an incident that was just cleared from 410 eastbound at McCullough Road. So that's some good news there. Water look at the map does show we're starting to get a few more icons popping up on the map, but we'll keep a close eye on the roads, guys. Hey, Steph, I think I pulled a hammy running from here. Running, oh, yeah, really? that, was a pretty, that was a pretty good pace there. That was, Mark. That yeah. was. Running yeah. across the studio. But I have to hand yeah. this back to Steph. There you go. It's part oh. of my 48 minute mile. Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's always fun is also trying to, to as I was shuttling my wife and all of her run group mm -hmm. yesterday morning in the dark and go, oh, this road's blocked off. That road, and you're trying oh, to, that's you know, kind of tricky, yeah. right? It's very yeah. tricky. That's always an You deserve a medal yourself. Yes. I don't know <laughs> Best about that. Best driver ever. We go ever. past this long. <laughs> yeah, hats off to all the people, like the, you know, the gentleman that we were talking to there, and I know yes. that the group of gals that my wife had, had been training for the past couple of months, and, you know, they couldn't run all that far and they all finished so yeah fantastic for everybody there it's a big event so it's great to see all the folks out there once again all right this morning temperatures are very very warm we're in the upper 60s low 70s and uh fog is the biggest issue in places showers not so big of an issue don't be surprised if you see one or two of them out there and then later on this afternoon yeah today's one of those upside down days as we call it to 55 and that'll be it here in town by about four or five o'clock in the afternoon very very windy conditions as well well, here's a look outside right now, and you can barely see the, the skyline. Just a couple of lights there. 
off in the distance and visibility has dropped a little bit now at the airport. New Braunfels still at five, eight at Port SA, and then you head over toward Castroville and it's just running into a wall of fog out there. Pea soup, Hondo, quarter mile, half mile, Kerrville, a lot of very thick fog out to the west and now it's starting to show up there along the coastal plain as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on this for the next couple of hours. Now, the dense fog advisory for northern portions of the hill country is in effect up until seven o'clock and obviously there's thicker fog even that's not covered by this advisory. Then once that front moves on through here, that's going to just kind of sweep all the fog on out. So the front itself is producing some rain and obviously the majority of it is well off there to the east going across 35 and then sort of tail end of it. There may be a couple of sprinkles as that front moves on through and you can see it's just about to work its way through uh, Fredericksburg. Now, Temperatures, dew point temperatures, humidity, they're all going to be dropping today with those very blustery north to northeasterly winds out there. But then the humidity is going to come back in by the end of the week and it's going to be basically hot and humid by Thursday and Friday. We're looking at dew points well up in the 60s, temperatures well up into the 80s, flirting with record highs. And then we get another front moving on through here just in time for the weekend. So this low out there to the west of us has been throwing all the moisture on in. That's going to sort of fall apart and we get into kind of a, a zonal pattern here. Uh, obviously on the warm side, things are definitely going to be warming up and just kind of a blase sort of pattern other than the fact that we're going to be uh, seeing near record high temperatures and big, big, strong southwesterly flow. Then that next front moves on through here again, just in time for the weekend. And that's going to cool us off and get rid of some of that humidity. So temperatures will continue to drop down. The front's going to be moving through here in town right around nine o'clock. Again, we've been saying all morning long, grab a jacket for your head out the door this morning because you'll need it by later on this afternoon. 63 at noon, 55 later on this afternoon and very windy today. Then tomorrow morning, starting off at 45 degrees, some clouds, maybe a sprinkle early tomorrow morning, kind of doubtful though. 65 in the afternoon, then heat comes back 84 by Friday, just about a record high temperature. Another front comes through just in time for the weekend. All right. Very good. That's why I leave all my clothes out throughout the year. I don't put in the back or seat summer. of the car. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen. Oh, it's so. that car in the parking lot. Yeah. Now I know which one's tough. Congratulations <laughs> on the uh, race. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 622, about 69 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Conference USA Champion Roadrunners are bowl bound. We're going to have a preview coming up. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixin, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Aw, you guys. Dupixin helps prevent asthma attacks. A three. So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixin is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixin. Welcome back. The UTSA Roadrunners are going bowling for the third time in their young football history and for the second season in a row when they face San Diego State at the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl on December 21st at 6.30 p.m. The season of first Conference USA champs will try and win their first bowl game after two previous appearances. Just last year, they lost to Louisiana in the first responders bowl, 31-24. And then in 2016, they fell to New Mexico, 23-20 in the New Mexico Bowl. Now, after defeating Western Kentucky in front of over 41,000 fans at the Dome Friday night, UTSA will try and cap off their best season in program history with a December to remember. Roadrunners will be the visiting team at the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl matchup. The game is set for Tuesday. December 21st, 6.30 p.m. at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. And time now, 6.26 and about 69 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, a plane comes down in Oregon, leaving one person dead. We're going to have those details just ahead. And Katrina Weber staying on top of an overnight shooting that left one man dead. She'll join us live with the latest details.
San Antonio police is searching for two suspects connected to a deadly shooting outside a bar. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The people who they're looking for may not even be old enough to get inside. I'll tell you more about it. And terrifying moments for one man after his vehicle got stuck underneath an 18 wheeler. We're going to have those details. And right now, hovering around 70 degrees out at the airport. Fog has been a problem in a few spots. Big cold front on the way. We're about to cool down, so Mike has your fashion accessories for the day coming up. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Monday, December 6th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. We are in December, and you are celebrating an anniversary. Congrats. 23 years at Quesa. This month, yes. This month. I, I just just realized uh, over the weekend. Yes, 23 years. That so is awesome. I remember when you first got here. Yes, Aww. and you were like, when are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> I no. I'm just no. kidding. No. <laughs> I didn't Silly. say that to your face. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm kidding, okay? Anyway, the <laughs> <Love you, bro. laughs> being scolded by step. The front's moving on through here, <laughs> and we've become best of buddies, so. That's why we can joke like that, right? right? Anyway, I'm gonna try and dig myself out of this one here, and, <laughs> and we do have some fog to deal with. Visibility, uh, you can barely, uh, once again, make out the skyline right there. Temperature, as Mark was talking about, is hovering around 70 right now, and that number is sky high, and as the, the wind kind of slackens off a little bit with these two numbers, the dew point and the temperature running neck and neck, that's going to help out with fog chances. And as that front approaches, now we do have a dense fog advisory in northern portions of the hill country, but despite that, not covering everywhere, the thickest fog is right there around Medina County right now. Castroville, zero visibility. It's dropped a little bit out there at the airport. Stinson's at 4, 3 Pleasanton, and then Hondo, Uvalde, heading out toward Rock Springs, uh, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, a lot of very thick fog in parts of the hill country as of right now. And the front is pretty much just about moving through Fredericksburg right now. We've got a couple of uh, little sprinkly showers. Obviously, more rain is further off to the northeast. This is not going to be a huge rain event with this. You'll see a couple of showers out there in the next few hours, and that'll be about it. Mold is on the moderate side. The updated count's going to come out in about an hour hour and a half or so warm and humid. But then as the front moves on through again, it squeezes out a couple of showers. Temperatures will then start their decline. We'll be dropping down a good 15 degrees at least throughout the afternoon. Windy and cooler with uh, boy, just nice fall weather. So therefore, take a jacket this morning because you'll need it by this afternoon. Heating up then the rest of the week. Tomorrow we start off cold, but then by the end of the week, we're going to be near a record high temperature. Now the front's going to move through just in time for the weekend. So back to December for the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, I had some big problems this morning. Yeah, you know, it's been kind of scattered right now, Mike. Here's 35 at Bamsey. Earlier we showed you a shot of a crash there. Looks like that is cleared out, uh, but let's get a quick look around town. There's 35 at Loop 1604. Traffic is picking up in a lot of these areas. I-10 at Presa looks pretty dark out there, but again, traffic is moving now that the morning is getting going and be on the lookout. There are some problems out on the roadways. Let's go ahead and take you right here to that stall that's been there throughout the morning off 35 northbound at Ritterman. Thankfully, it's not been causing any issues, but watch out for that driver. Uh, let's take a jump down over here because we do have a new stall off I-35 northbound in Nogolitos and a jump up over here does show another stall off State Highway 151 eastbound at Petranco is causing some buildup there, so watch out for those uh, stalled vehicles, especially when we have first responders that are working to assist those drivers. Uh, taking a wider look at the map, it does look like we have a new crash that popped up somewhere along 35. We'll check that out in just a moment, but the relief that we are seeing this morning, thankfully, it's green across the board with these inbound times. If you are traveling into the downtown San Antonio area, you shouldn't expect any delays at this hour, but that can always quickly change whenever we start to see more people out on the roadways. So one last look at Transguide US 90 at Nogalitos. Things are getting moving. Make sure you keep your eyes on the road. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are looking for two underage suspects in connection with a deadly shooting at a Southside bar. They believe those teens are responsible for the death of a man who intervened in a fight. Happened around closing time at a bar on Pleasanton Road south of Loop 410. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Have police released any information about how the man was killed? Well, we know that he was shot and killed, but uh, what they have told us about this man is that he's the husband of one of the women who was involved in that original fight. Now, I did speak to a friend of that man. He told me that the man who was killed is in his early 30s. 
Now, that man, again, was uh, outside this bar, which is known to customers as Cubilete. Police say that two women had gotten into a fight right around closing time, just before 2 this morning. They say the husband of one of them tried to intervene and break up that fight, but they say the other woman called her sons to the scene, and they believe one of them shot the husband, killing him. Detectives tell me that those sons, who are believed to be 15 and 18 years old, were gone when officers arrived, and they still have not found them. The police, as you'll notice, are gone from the scene. They were here earlier, but they've taken down their tape, and they have left here. We understand they also took several people into custody who they are questioning as witnesses. But again, police believe the people who were involved in the shooting did leave the scene. And police tell us that they uh, caution that they're still trying to sort out everything that happened. So uh, they are still in the investigation phases of this case. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We are getting a look at the teen facing charges in connection with a deadly shooting at a West Side car wash. This is 18 year old Cesar Martinez. He's charged with murders in the Bear County Jail on a $150,000 bond. Officers say he allegedly shot a 33 year old man at a car wash near Ingram Park Mall this weekend. When officers arrived at the scene, the man was unresponsive with a gunshot wound. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Just before the shooting, investigators believe an argument broke out between Martinez, Martinez rather, one of Martinez's family members and that 33 year old man. One man is in the hospital this morning after his vehicle got trapped under an 18 wheeler. That happened around 10 last night in the 14,000 block of I-10. Fire crews say the man was awake and able to speak when they got to the scene. There's not an official word on his condition. A man's dead after two Houston police officers hit him with their patrol car on a high speed chase. The officer involved now on administrative leave. According to the police department, the officers were pursuing suspects connected to a stolen vehicle and aggravated robbery when they lost control of their cruiser. The vehicle ended up on a sidewalk, hitting a pedestrian unrelated to the case who has not been identified yet. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Three of the five suspects being sought were caught. A pilot is dead this morning following a small plane crash in Oregon. The plane came down around 5 yesterday afternoon in the parking lot of a car dealership. Crews believe the pilot was the only person on board and no one on the ground was hurt. Right now, it's not clear what caused that plane to come down. Now to the Michigan school shooting investigation. We're learning more about the parents of the teen suspect and their actions before they were arrested over the weekend. Meanwhile, seven more teens have been arrested in connection with other school threats in that area. ABC's Ike Jachi has more. This morning, new details about the capture of James and Jennifer Crumbly, the parents of the 15-year-old charged in the Michigan high school shooting. Inside. Authorities found the couple inside an empty commercial building Saturday after missing a court appearance to face involuntary manslaughter charges in connection with the shooting. The man who owns that building says he has a friendly relationship with the Crumblies and he invited them to stay at his art studio to avoid death threats and hostility that was surrounding their home. According to the man's attorney, he was not aware that authorities were looking for the Crumblies. Authorities say the couple withdrew $4,000 from an ATM before the manhunt ended, but their lawyer insists the couple was not fleeing. Our clients were absolutely going to turn themselves in it was just a matter of logistics. Investigators say James Crumley purchased a gun on Black Friday, days before their son allegedly used it to kill four students at Oxford High School. One student remains hospitalized. According to prosecutors, the Crumleys resisted removing their son from school on the day of the shooting. Hours before the attack, the parents were confronted with a disturbing drawing and chilling message that said blood everywhere, which was found on the boy's desk. In a statement, the superintendent said that the teen claimed the drawing was part of a video game he was designing. The superintendent also saying the teen stayed with counselors for more than an hour, and at no time did counselors believe the student might harm others based on his behavior, responses, and demeanor, which appeared calm. But he was eventually allowed to return to class because he had no prior disciplinary infractions and his parents refused to take him home. This morning, the Crumbleys and their son have pleaded not guilty. They are not speaking to us, any of them, and they are all in my jail, all segregated in separate cells and constantly monitored. And now seven teenagers in the Detroit area have been charged in connection with copycat threats, which forced more than 80 districts to cancel school last week. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, New York.
New stricter travel rules start today for passengers coming into the United States. Nearly all travelers must have a negative COVID-19 test one day before departure. Any foreign national who travels to the U.S. must be fully vaccinated and the federal mask requirement for people in travel hubs like airports and those using public transportation like planes, trains and buses will remain through March. Some travel industry leaders say any restrictions should be placed on individual passengers and not entire countries. We need to figure out how to balance not only uh, the economy and the health concerns uh, simultaneously, but we also need to, to think about uh, making sure that we can still welcome international travelers here to the U.S. Right now, the U.S. has a travel ban on South Africa and several other Southern African nations, but officials say those bans are being reevaluated every day. 640 right now. It is one of the largest breast cancer symposiums in the world, and it's right here in San Antonio. It's happening this Tuesday, and a local oncologist joined a leading essay this weekend to discuss the goals and accomplishments. The San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium is where the latest approved treatments are first discussed with the best of the best researchers and physicians in their field. Dr. Virginia Kakamani with UT Health San Antonio joined us to talk about the goals for the symposium and some of the amazing medical advancements. Take a listen. What we're focusing more on is what we call targeted therapies. And targeted therapies are where they target the cancer and not the whole body. We've relied on chemotherapy way too much. And chemotherapy kills every fast-growing cell in the body, which is why women lose their hair. They have other side effects. But with the targeted therapies, those therapies are smart enough to just go to the cancer and therefore cause fewer symptoms and also work best. And the most, the newest ones are the ones that uh, focus on, on strengthening our immune system to kill the cancer cells. We talked about a wide variety of topics, including screening, when and how frequently you should get a mammogram. If you have any questions, you can check out the entire conversation. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. Happening today, Sheriff Javier Salazar and deputies from the Bear County Sheriff's Office will be providing an honor escort for recently fallen detention cadet Kevin Rowe. Rowe passed away last week after experiencing a medical episode during physical training exercises. Roe will be escorted from the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office to Mission Park South Funeral Home on Southeast Military Drive. It's happening later this morning at 9. All his cadet classmates will salute him upon arrival at the funeral home. And time now, 642 and 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, early birds versus night owls. We'll tell you which is the better schedule to have. And welcome back at 645. So we've all heard of early birds and night owls, but which is the better schedule to adopt? Well, while the saying the early bird gets the worm is true, experts say the late shift can be just as productive. Researchers say plenty of artists, writers, and creative professionals credit the quiet hours for getting their best work done. So what's the biggest downside to being a night owl? Probably society being built mostly around the nine to five schedule, which is generally more accommodating for early birds. But maybe not super early birds like us. <laughs> right. So what's the bottom line? Whether you love staying up hours into the late hours of the night or waking up early with the sunshine, experts say just get enough sleep. According to CDC, sleep plays an essential role in both physical and mental health, and that adults should be getting at least seven hours of shut eye. Oh, so there's that catch right yeah, there, seven straight hours. <laughs> on mm. the weekends, maybe, right? I wish, sometimes. I <laughs> oh, mean, it's tough. On the weekends as well? It's tough. After you've been doing this schedule a while, you know, you just kind of... Your body... People are like, well, you eventually get used to it, right? No. <laughs> you really don't. No. But we're in it together. Steph, yes. Steven, Mike, let's go to Steven with an update on traffic. Yeah, I woke up today at 1.30, uh, and I couldn't go back to sleep, so, so I got on up. the treadmill and only did half a mile but I was proud of myself. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, there's awesome. some reduction there. But <laughs> let's go ahead and get a look at our roadways for these other early birds that are getting their morning started there. Loop 410 at Callahan. Uh, traffic is picking up in, in some of these areas. Morning rush is already here. Uh, take a look at Loop 410 at San Pedro. Looking pretty busy out there uh, for 6 or a little bit after 645 this morning. So let's go ahead and take you to the map because some issues to be able to look out for. Uh, earlier, we told you about a crash detected here off I-35. Uh, this is off the southbound lanes right at Judson Road. Transguide has listed this as a 
stall. So right now we're going to continue to report that as a stall vehicle, not causing any issues, but be on the lookout for that. If you're traveling into the San Antonio area, jump down there. It still shows that we have a stall off I-35 northbound at Nogalitos and a jump over here. A stall still causing issues off State Highway 151 eastbound at Petrenko. You can see that traffic building in those eastbound lanes. So watch out for that or pack your patience this morning. Wider look at the map does show that it is getting a little bit busier. We're starting to see some of those lanes building up with some congestion. So uh, make sure that you get out on time and take it easy out on the roadways. But what can you expect weather wise? Mike has that answer. What's well, up, as we're getting into the, the heart of the morning commute, it seems that the fog is definitely getting thicker and it's definitely going to be an issue in some parts of the area. This is from our South Cam. This is a Brook City base looking toward the, the skyline there. There's the lights on top of the Alamo Dome. Other than that, I mean, it's really hard to see and Stinson has definitely dropped off. It was about four miles visibility for a while now, just a mile and three quarters. Still plenty of thick fog out to the west and to the northwest and holding steady out at the airport Randolph, but this can change just to really at the, the drop of a hat and then plenty of thick fog out there in portions of the hill country. Also, if you go down 37 toward Beville, you're going to run into some of that fog. Dense fog advisory only for this portion of the hill country uh, for about the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Haven't seen any any indications, nor has the Weather Service indicated that it's going to issue or expand or extend this uh, this dense fog advisory. But just watch out for it, obviously. And as far as the front, it's continuing to work its way down to the southeast. It started up there. We were watching around San Angelo this morning, and as you can see, a couple of more showers are developing right there around Fredericksburg, more off to the east and to the northeast of there. Temperatures out ahead of that front are still in the 60s and 70s, uh, and the humidity remains, of course, extremely high. But notice around Junction now, the dew points dropped down to 47 degrees. The wind has started to shift around 57 now at uh, Rock Springs, so the front will continue to move down in here. The winds are starting to shift around as well. Northerly 23 at Junction, 13 Fredericksburg, and it's going to be very breezy throughout the day, and then we get that cooler air continuing to move on in here. Again, the line of just a couple of scattered showers here and there along the front as it moves on through here. So that, along with some of the fog, may have some a uh, little bit of mist, some damp roads with some of that fog, but it's not going to be a huge issue, just enough in places to make the roads a little bit uh, on the, the slippery side this morning throughout the rest of the morning commute. But as the front moves on through, it will not really clear things out all that much. Clear out the fog, but we'll still have a lot of clouds, maybe a couple of uh, leftover sprinkly showers around tomorrow morning. Very cold tomorrow morning, and then it is right back to the heat. It is going to be just downright hot and humid by the end of the week. 63 at noon today, so very, very warm, but temperatures will drop down as the uh, colder air moves on in here. Windy conditions, 55 later on this afternoon with mostly cloudy skies. And then over the next few days, again, we start off. Tomorrow's going to be almost a normal day. Mid 40s, mid 60s, right about average, a lot of sunshine. There comes the uh, warm temperature, 75 Wednesday, 84 on Friday. The record is 85 both Thursday and Friday. We'll be flirting with it on Thursday and really, really close to it on Friday. But another front is going to cool us back down for the weekend. But the uh, advice for today is grab a jacket before you leave the door this morning. Before you leave the house, go out the door, I should say. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio Spurs get a big time win against a, a Western Conference juggernaut over the weekend. Silver and Black taking on the Warriors on the road Saturday. Derek White's 25 points and DeJounte Murray's 23 helped lift San Antonio over Golden State 112 to 107. Busy week for our Spurs tonight. The team is in Phoenix to take on the Suns. Tip off is at 8 p.m. Then they return home tomorrow to welcome the Knicks to the AT&T Center. Denver Nuggets are in town Thursday and Saturday. Then New Orleans. We'll take uh, is we'll take the trip to San Antonio on Sunday. Go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. Very exciting to see these wins. Time now 651 and about 69 degrees for now. How many times have you said tomorrow I'll go to the gym? Well, tomorrow <laughs> on GMSA, we'll give some pro tips for beginners who are looking to draft a workout game plan. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are at 69 degrees right now. Uh, kind of humid, but like Mike said, a big warning. Uh, take your jacket to work if you're headed out the door right now. We'll be right back. 
Monday morning is here and so is the traffic. Let's get a glass look at TransGuide here, bringing you right to these shots here. US 90 in Ogolitos, things picking up. Uh, but right now we do have a stall off I-35 southbound where we're starting to see some delays in those southbound lanes. A uh, jump over here does show we still have that stall off 35 northbound in Ogolitos. A uh, jump over here also a stall causing some problems off State Highway 151 eastbound at Ogolitos. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Dense fog advisory remains in effect uh, parts of the Hill Country. I haven't seen any indication that this is going to be uh, extended past that, but we still have plenty of thick fog out there. Stinson two and a half miles, zero Castroville, uh, quarter mile visibility, Kerrville, as well as Hondo and out to the west. And then it's going to eh, kind of flirting with it here in town. The front continuing to work its way through the Hill Country. You can see that broken line of rain right there and temperatures are just going to be dropping down throughout the day. Mid 50s by later on this afternoon and very, very blustery. Thank you, team. It's been a good Monday morning. Yes, it has. Don't forget that jacket and we'll see you back here at night. Good Morning America is next.